there are a lot of things that will make a character um, that may not be a main character uh, a fan favorite. But consistently <laughs> one of those things is a big old booty. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, everyone, and welcome to GalaxyCon Live, where we're bringing the convention experience directly to you. I am your host for today's panel, Mario Bueno, and I am very excited. You could almost say plus ultra levels of excited for today's panel, because My Hero Academia, since debuting in the pages of Shonen Jump, has gone on to become one of the most successful things to come from that hollowed publication. And when it became an anime, not only was it a big hit in its native country of Japan, but it became a United States of smash hit around the world. And we are very, very privileged to be able to speak to some of the folks who are bringing to life the colorful and quirky cast of characters from the English language version of this wonderful story. Let's first bring to our virtual stage someone who you may know as Yuri Nakamura in Angel Beats, Wendy Marvell in Fairy Tale, Black Star in Soul Eater, and Kami Utsushimi in My Hero Academia, Brittany Kabowski. Welcome, welcome. Ah, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here. And joining us also on this virtual stage, you know her as Panty Anarchy in Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt, Kenna Alberona in Fairy Tale, and Mount Lady in My Hero Academia. Please welcome to our virtual stage, Jamie Markey. Hi. Happy hello, to hello. be here. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you here. And joining them, you know him as Yusuke Urameshi in Yu Yu Hakusho, Dende and Raditz in Dragon Ball Super, and as Eijiro Kirishima in My Hero Academia. Please welcome Justin Cook. Hey, hey thank you so much. Appreciate it. I appreciate it having you here as well. And joining them here on our virtual stage, you know him as Hitaki Hinata in Angel Beats. Berthold Hoover in Attack on Titan, and Shoto Todoroki in My Hero Academia. Please welcome David Matranga to our virtual stage. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. <laughs> and rounding out our group of heroes for today, you know him as Yuri Dreyer in Fairy Tale, Connie Springer in Attack on Titan, Hideyoshi Nagachika in Tokyo Ghoul, and Katsuki Bakugo in My Hero Academia. Please welcome to our virtual stage, Clifford Chapin. Hello. (laughs) Welcome, welcome, and the gang's all here. So let's jump right into it, because I know we are going to have a lot of questions. People are very excited to speak with you all. So my opening question for all of you, um, especially in superhero anime from the last decade, one of the interesting things that has been portrayed in these superhero stories coming from Japan has been the dichotomy of many of these hero characters displaying traditionally villainous tendencies. Uh, it is portrayed a lot more subtly in My Hero Academia than some others. So what what are your feelings on this, especially since some of your characters uh, definitely display that? If we could start with uh, Clifford <laughs> being the best example, considering how we are first introduced to uh, to Bakugo in the first season of what? My Hero Academia. I don't, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Number one hero, number one future hero the whole time. Uh, <laughs> um, man, I don't know the 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 premise of of characters with with shades of gray like that. You know that like they want to be heroic, but they're not they're not <clears throat> the perfect example of it. I think it's just a it's a wonderful character trope uh, in any storytelling because if the if the character is just perfect, then the story is boring. You know. <clears throat> They don't really have anywhere to grow and they don't really have anything to challenge them. Um, so I don't know. I, I always think that that's a really great thing to have present in the characters because you have somewhere to go with them. I think that you see that a lot, uh, I think, with the prevalence of Marvel movies right now. Like we're inundated with superheroes that are human. There's the human side right. of it. People aren't <laughs> perfect. And so I think what's really great about this show in particular is people can watch it and find themselves in someone. 
right? And which, you know, communicates that anybody has the potential to be a superhero or to be super in one way or another. And so being human is part of that because if you don't have to overcome anything, then you're perfect from the beginning, which is more like, I don't know, what is that? Like deity, like it's not, it's, you can't connect to that necessarily, right. but you can with people who are <laughs> flawed because we are, except for Matt yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would, I would second all, I'm um, error uh, second and third, all of that. I, I, I think, um, it, it adds a layer of, of complexity to the characters that, really lets you in uh, to their story, to their journey. Uh, I think that they also do it in the flip side. They do it with some of the out and out villains. You know, I, I um, the first thing that came to mind for me was was Stain and the whole uh, Stain arc. You know, he, he's such an interesting villain because if you think about, if you really get into his ideology, you can sort of see why he believes what he believes. Now he might be going about it the wrong way, uh, you know, depending on on your beliefs, but um, I think that that makes even the villains more uh, interesting. And if the lines are grayed that way on both sides, then there's sort of this weird conflict in the middle um, that can go in any direction, which I think is just really inherently compelling. Yeah. You're here. Yeah, I agree on that. I don't know if there's anything you could add because it's so uh, well said. <laughs> uh, Justin, any uh, final thoughts before we move on to our first fan question? Well, I mean, if we're final thoughting on on grays and characters, you know, that's that's what makes all the shows interesting. You know, that's uh, to, to everybody's point. That's you know, uh, having them be more human, more connectable. Uh, these are all the realities of of making a show. I think in today's world, uh, you know. Uh, Television, I think, brings that to the page. Like Jamie mentioned, uh, movies are bringing that more to the page. You know, getting getting a movie arc with twenty three movies to follow, you know, just adds so much more depth behind a character. And and you know, obviously, the length is certainly something that anime has been doing for for quite some time. So. Rock and roll. Well, thank you very much for those very insightful thoughts. Uh, we are already ready to go with some fan Q&A, so let's dive right into it. Let's see what we have coming at us first. This one is from Ghost. The question I is... I that's their what? real name. <laughs> uh, what is something that you learned while voicing your character, be it a life lesson or just something random? <sighs> Um, that it's really hard to be flat and still have life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's kind of a, a joke answer. I, 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 um, I, uh, I, I guess one of the things I've, I've learned while, um, voicing, uh, Todoroki is is um, just a lot about expectations, about um, being hard on yourself, uh, uh, expecting having high standards to the point where uh, sometimes you can always see yourself as a bit of a disappointment. Um, I think he, I think the character of Todoroki struggles with that. So that's always sort of um, you know uh, in the front of my mind when I'm when I'm um, working on him. Um, and then th the last thing is that innocence can be funny. I think the only time that Todoroki is really funny is when he's just sort of innocent and clueless to the situation. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, Kirishima is a really inspiring character uh, for me. Uh, I love watching him be the best friend. I like watching him put other people first. And that's really inspiring uh, just to me, just to see uh, the ways that that kind of comes up in the story or the ways that kind of comes out, being able to to play that. Uh, those have been, some, I think, some of my favorite moments and certainly the moments that I, I can I can think back in certain real life moments of mine. Uh, for me, my, there, you know, there are a lot of lessons that it can obviously be taken away from the show, but as, as far as for me personally, uh, I've learned a lot about my own limits, uh, recording Bakugo, uh, because I, 
little known fact, I have to scream all the time. And uh, <laughs> <You don't say>. so <laughs> <laughs> there's a certain point where I, I kind of realized where I'm like, I'm not going to be able to finish this episode in this session, you know, because there's just so much screaming or so much yelling. And, and, uh, and fortunately, Colleen, you know, who's our, our voice director, she is uh, very used to having to scream a lot as one of her own characters uh, from another anime. And uh, so she's, uh, she's very aware of like the limit. And cause there'll be certain times where I'll be like, no, I, I can keep going. And then we're like, all right, let's do another take. And I'll be like, die. And she'll be like, all right, you're done. Like <laughs> She just calls it uh, for me. So I feel like I've learned a lot about my own limitations of where, where, how much can I do of Bakugo screaming in just one session at a time? And, and, uh, what's the what's the right level to set at like all right we can record about this much uh at a time mm. um i've learned that the uh internet will blow up whether or not your character is uncensored um because <laughs> that was like the biggest thing for whenever Kami first appeared on toonami um it, the internet blew up it was such a big deal and i realized you just can't um whether or not both ways there was people complaining on either side you just can't make them happy. You know, what can you do <laughs> uh i would say there are a lot of things that will make a character um that may not be a main character uh, a fan favorite, but consistently <laughs> one of those things is a big old booty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, it's consistent. <laughs> oh, I'm really glad you uh, you just really kind of delivered that the way you did. <laughs> uh, you, you really. You built that the right way. <laughs> Thank you. And for all of you aspiring content creators, well, there you go. Now you have the secret <laughs> to, to making all the fan favorite characters. <laughs> and speaking no of the fans, like this character. Let's give him a big butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now now we have to have uh, Jamie, you know, craft craft her own Dojinchi and uh, go. <laughs> no, kidding, kidding. Uh, but speaking of fans, we have some more fan questions coming up. Let's see what we have next up in the queue. This one is from Evan, and wow, uh, that was almost prophetic with that last rib. Uh, <laughs> what kind of YouTube channel would your character run? Well, I don't think Mount Lady would do a YouTube channel on her butt. Unless it was marketing. If it was just her, like being herself, she would probably do reviews on TV shows that she likes. And like a combination, like, you know, how people will pair wine with food. She'll pair chips with shows. And like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I think she would do. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I think yeah. Katie would be an Instagram influencer. <laughs> like a fashion lady. That, that, yeah, that's where I see her. That's my. I mean, her YouTube channel would be like dead in a second because she'd be like, "Yeah, totes," and everybody like, "What?" Yeah, and then it'd be over. <laughs> Instagrams for posing. YouTube's for potato chips. Yes, probably. I think uh, Shiva would do a, a reaction to music channel. I think that would be music reaction, <laughs> listening to music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Should do one of those, Justin. <laughs> I watch it. <laughs> I think uh, Todoroki would have a uh, you know best and various ways to cook soba uh, YouTube yeah. channel, oh. um, and then maybe like a side channel of hand crushing things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the food, like the ones with the food. Got no, is that what you're talking about? Those <laughs> no, made me so mad. I'm making my my two references are very very obscure. Like you really <laughs> got to be a Todoroki fan to get those. I feel like. <laughs> um, man, I always make this joke that like if we we get asked questions a lot, that's like, what if your hero wasn't? What if your character wasn't going to go on to be a pro hero? What would they do? Or if they were going to do stuff like um. We see sometimes in the show characters, professional heroes have to do other things, such as like do commercials, television commercials, and stuff like that. Um, mm. I always say that Bakugo's uh, commercials and things that we'd have to do would be for antiperspirants. Um, <laughs> and so I would like to believe that Bakugo would have a YouTube channel dedicated to uh, the best uh, antiperspirants and deodorant. I like this. <laughs> 
Let's go. I'm down. Oh man, some very, very creative channels that we can check in on and apparently <laughs> creative Instagrams as well. <laughs> so let's see what we have waiting in the wings next. Uh, this one, I apologize if I butcher your name, uh, Dreeton or Dryton. Uh, what or who inspired you to be a voice actor? So we are we are stepping uh, away from the characters and literally into the booth here. So what who, what or who inspired you to be a voice actor? <laughs> well, I was never inspired to be a voice actor. I just wanted to be an actor. And, uh, and that's how it all started for me. I have a degree in theater and I always wanted to perform and act and, and do all of those things. And um, once you get into the professional world, you do auditions. And I was called in to audition for this company called Funimation, for this show called Fruits Basket, for this dude named Justin Cook. <laughs> and I went and I auditioned and I was cast. And so yes. that's how I got into it. Yeah, that's Motoko Minagawa, the Yuki Fan Club president. So yeah, that was that was how I got into it. But I was I just want to be an actor. <laughs> Yeah, there are two actors that come to mind for me. Uh, one of them is Roy Scheider. I just feel like there's no actor that plays the common man better. And so I've always looked up to him. But uh, in regards to voice acting, when I discovered that that was a thing, it was Scatman Carruthers' voice. Uh, he voiced Jazz from the Transformer cartoons, but he also <clears> was <throat> Hong Kong Fooey, which is another one of my favorites. Uh, but uh, his voice really, really got me. And just realizing that could be a way of... Uh, you know, just another method and way of acting, uh, you know, really kind of put this uh, this <clears throat> genre of acting onto my map. I hadn't ever really considered it before. Uh, for me, uh, I was I was uh, inspired and in, to becoming a, a voice actor. That was my pursuit. I've I've never been particularly interested in being. Uh, on screen or in theater, um, but I always really liked cartoons growing up, so it was it was far more interesting to me. Um, and uh, the show that really inspired me uh, was a show called Beast Wars, which was the second Transformers show. Um, it came out when I was uh, eight years old, and uh, and to this day, like if we're on panels and people are like, "What are what are things that you you would recommend?" I have really good voice acting. I'm always like, "Beast Wars. Beast Wars has great voice acting." Um, <laughs> Just still, just some of the my favorite performances. I'll go back and watch Beast Wars every so many years, just to to kind of relive the thing that brought me here in the first place. Really great opportunity, though, to have said Justin and Jamie, but okay. Hey, listen. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, I didn't set out to uh, be. Uh, a voice actress in specific, I, I just wanted to act. Um, and uh, I was I was mostly doing theater around town and specifically musical theater was the thing I was most passionate about. Um, and I was just asked to come into ADV and I uh, didn't even know why, honestly. <laughs> so I remember saying, um, I said, oh, am I gonna sing? And, and Matt Greenfield was like, no. I was like, cool. <laughs> okay. And I went in totally, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and that's kind of how I, and then I was inspired by anime, but um, I had, I didn't know about it at the time. Yeah. My uh, story is very similar to, to Brittany and, and, and Jamie. I, I just wanted to be an actor. You know, I studied theater and I, I wanted to be on camera and on stage. I did have a, I did want to pursue voiceovers uh, from, uh, you know, a night when well, I was 19, 20 in college. I didn't know that it would show up the way it did as far as anime and video game stuff. I, I was, I thought of voice acting and voiceovers mostly as commercials at that time. But um uh, so yeah, I, I, I found my way into an audition for ADV back in the day. And, um, yeah, uh, that was a long time ago and, uh, yeah. So, but now I'm, I am very inspired by voice acting specifically, just, uh, a lot of people, my friends, but just hearing different performances, narrator type performances, all kinds of things. So it's definitely been I've become more of a student of voice acting over the years. 
Yeah, and for for those of you who are watching uh, and you are you know aspiring voice actors, the the first thing a lot of people will tell you is you definitely want to be an actor first, uh, as you are hearing by the you know very diverse backgrounds of our guests. Uh, so just you know just a fun little thing to keep in the back of your mind. And again, there are so many uh, different outlets uh, to to act even within voice acting. So uh, always keep your options open because. That's uh, that's what brought our wonderful guests to our virtual stage. And speaking of bringing things to our virtual stage, our next question that we are bringing to our virtual stage, let's see what we've got here. This one is from Alan. What scene from the show had the most impact on you? Hmm. I really enjoyed Kami hitting on Todoroki. I thought that was like the funniest <laughs> thing ever. Honestly, I was having way too much fun. Because <laughs> that was the first time I got to see her as herself. And uh, I was right. like, oh, it was it was a big surprise. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just thought she's so brazen. And, and Todoroki's just like, like so thrown uh, by like, like, what? <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's Todoroki's interface when that happened. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like that meme with the Beyonce's guy holding her hand, or or is it Beyonce or who is it? I don't know if you guys have seen it, and it zooms in on the security guard's face, and he's like, <laughs> like "Oh my god, I, I don't think I've seen it. I don't think I've seen it. I don't have a clue what you're talking about." Sorry, okay. <laughs> We're all gonna get a text from Carpenter. This is such a hard question. <laughs> it's such a hard question to answer because there's so there's quite a few, but yeah. Um, I don't know. For me, um, the scene with uh, Todor the fight uh, in the sports festival, Todoroki and Midoriya, and um, you know, I see now Midoriya, thank you, and him, you know, it's your power. All of that was really inspiring. Uh, that had an impact on me. Um, Todoroki's um, uh, the 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 origin episode, um, all of that had a huge impact. And the last thing I'll say is. Um, the 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 stain arc you know with uh, the guys in hosu city and kind of teaming up and coming together and uh supporting each other um that had a lot of impact on me uh i mean i'm kind of in the same boat as david as i feel like i've got i've got so many scenes that come to my mind of like the the sports festival fights uh, are yeah. are all great and <clears throat> i just love those fights but then the the scenes with the kids uh, in season four where they're trying to help the kids, uh, you know, rein themselves in and and see what see what it's like to have uh, older role models of of hero heroic uh, kids and stuff like that. Like that, I love a lot of those scenes and the Bakugo taking that one kid aside and you know and being like, if you're always looking down on other people, you you'll never see your own faults. Like you need to you need to stop doing that. Um, but then, like, uh, not to get into it too much, because I feel like it's one of the harder things for people to see. But like, the climax of Heroes Rising is is some of my favorite Bakugo uh, acting that I've gotten to do. Um, and I won't go into it too much because I don't want to spoil it. And if you haven't seen it, you should go see Heroes Rising somehow. But uh, man, that that whole that whole movie is some of my favorite Bakugo moments. So, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jamie. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say, uh, you know, with Mount Lady, there's a lot of superficiality, but I loved the moment uh, when she sacrifices herself or puts herself at risk, really, and gets hurt to save everybody. Um, you know, then you get to see that there's more to her than just the marketing. She knows the game. She plays the game. And I respect her for that. But, <laughs> um, but when it comes down to it, she really does want to help people and do the right thing. And I love that they give her that little nod. So that's mine for her. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, you know, we get to do just these little scenes. We don't always get to see how the entire story plays out and how we inter interact with that. Uh, so with Kirishima, I think it was really the movie uh, and seeing that he had brought Bakugo dress clothes to wear. For <laughs> uh, that I was like, okay, I get, I get this. I started to get the guy at Kirishima mm -hmm. at that point. And, uh, and then it was getting to play bigger scenes as it would as the storyline would progress uh but that one was i think the one that kind of kicked my imagination into into high gear of like okay i feel like i know where the guy is coming from now and that so that mm -hmm. was the impact for me and we have plenty of time for more questions so let's throw another one up there this one is from caroline 
what is the most heartwarming moment you've had with a fan? Oh, hmm. Uh, mine was, uh, Justin Briner and I were, uh, grabbing some dinner. We were at a convention. Um, uh, we were grabbing some dinner and, uh, a guy at the, at the restaurant recognized us. Um, and he came up to us cause we were, we were promoting, uh, the start of season three. Um, and he came up to us and he was like, guys, I, you know, I want to, I want to talk to you. I want to say thank you for the performances that you guys do. And, and, uh, it was, it was very humbling. Uh, but it got more humble because he then said that he, uh, ran in marathons, um, like charity marathons, you know, uh, where they raise money for various charities and typically ones for, um, children who are, you know, sick and, and whatnot. And, uh, and he always would run in costume of superheroes. Uh, so like he, he dressed up as like Superman or Spider-Man and stuff like that. And he, he said he had this ideology of that kids want to see their heroes, um, working for them. And, uh, and he had gotten hurt, uh, doing one of the races. He tore a, a ligament, I think in his leg, if I remember the story correctly, uh, now two years later. And, um, and he was feeling really down on himself and he had discovered my hero academia in the time that he was injured, um, and hadn't gone through getting the proper medical treatment for his injury. Um, and he, he discovered my hero academia. He watched through the whole show and it, he said it inspired him to finally get the, um, the proper medical care for his injury. And that in the next race he was doing, um, to raise money for charity, he was dressing as all might. Oh, so that is my most heartwarming and I've had so many, but that one just sits at the top of the one that always comes to my mind uh, most readily. And now all of you can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so many to try to go through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had one in particular. Um, it was at a convention. I think it was, I think it might've been, the last galaxy con that I did live, like in person, I think so, but it was just a, it was a, it was a, a brief conversation. Uh, there wasn't any, you know, bells and whistles around it. It was really simple, but really, really honest and sincere, vulnerable, you know, it had an impact that way. And it was just someone saying, you know, talking about their relationship with their father and uh you know relating to the complex and complicated uh relationship between Todoroki and Endeavor and and being inspired by uh the way that Todoroki handles it um and and sort of his ebb and flow his journey with it they said um uh, it, it impacted them to um you know, have to open some communication, but also to be okay, you know, setting boundaries over some of the stuff that had happened in their life and, and not being able to forgive, but, or, or accept, but not necessarily, or, or forgive, but not forget. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, uh, I, I have, um, there are many times where that, comes up and uh this was just about the 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 journey of Todoroki and how that's helped them deal with their own journey in that in that arena so you know we make, turning. <laughs> we, make a, we make a lot of jokes and stuff and we like to have a lot of fun but there there really are so many experiences that fans come up to us and 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 tell us how much various shows and especially my hero means to them. And I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and told me about like my, I watched this show with my grandfather before he passed away. And so it's really right. special to me because it was like the last thing that I had to bond with them. Right. And, and there, and, and that's just, you know, one such example, but there really are so many and, and, mm -hmm you know, the character, it, it comes from that the characters are so relatable and that there's, right. there's struggle with identity and adversity. And, and do I feel like I'm good enough to achieve this thing that I want and, and whatnot. And, uh, I say, I say it a lot, but the, uh, 
those stories, you know, they mean so much to all of you guys, the fans that come up and talk to us, but they mean a lot to us too. And I, I know that I personally, I always go in the booth and I try and give it my best. But when I hear those stories and how much that these things touch the the audience and mean to them, I take those, those things with me back into the booth. And then I, it propels me for like further. It makes me want to go even farther with what I've been doing and, and try even harder. So, um, <clears throat> It's hard. Yeah. It, I think it's hard to pick the heartwarming stories, but they mean so much. It is. Yeah. I think too. Um, no I, the person who wears my heart on my sleeve, you will always know how I feel. Everyone <laughs> here can attest to that. <laughs> so for me, some of those stories are so uh, heartwarming and over overwhelming that I can't tell them without crying. And so that is kind of, that keeps me from sharing a lot of it because it, it means so much that it's really hard to just be like, so this thing, and then now I'm ugly crying for the rest of it. You know what I mean? I did not put on all this mascara. Don't lose it. So, um, in lieu of some of, some of, there's one story that I guess I really love too is uh, a couple years ago, Monica and I were, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Monica and I were at a convention. We were doing a panty and stocking panel, and some um, uh, a young young man came up to us and told us that we were gay icons. <laughs> panty and stocking, and we both immediately started crying. <laughs> we were like, "What?" <laughs> so That's yeah, awesome. I mean, it's such a little thing. It's so much, just like you know, that, that we inspire, you know, all kinds of people. And, and that was just like a really highlight moment, but I mean, that's so simple and I'm still emotional about it. Can you imagine the stuff that is like really hard, like tugs at your heartstrings? Yeah. Those, I can't get through those. <laughs> yeah. It's just so hard to like think, I guess that every single time that I think of a moment, I think of another one, but there are so yeah. many, friendships that I've developed out of meeting someone at a con in, you know, and the way that I meet them is they're at my table and they're a fan, but like we get along so well, we end up being like some of the best friends that I have. I met at cons and that's how it all started. Um, and so it's hard to kind of like weed through that because almost every interaction that I have is, is pretty dang wonderful. Um, but yeah, so I think that's what it is for me. It's just, it's really hard for me to like pinpoint it. Um, Cause I think about like one of the last shows I went to with you, Jamie and the, and the girl that was a fan of Wendy from Fairy Tale, And I like, I, I just got down on the floor with her cause she was crying. <laughs> and, um, and it, it, you know, that kind of stuff is just like so humbling. And um, I, I don't even know, you know, well, I, mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a mind blowing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, to meet somebody who, like, it's almost like an unconditional love because of the work that you've done. Like, what? And so at conventions and stuff, it is a, it's a really humbling experience to have people just appreciate you uh, for what, for the art that you've done or what you've done. And, and um, unexpected, I would say. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. yeah. not, it's always kind of blows my mind um, that people care that much. And it, it is a really nice feeling. Yes. For sure. And, you know, there's examples of where parents have introduced anime to their kids and that's how that and that love has kind of been passed between families or vice versa, where it's the where, you know, the, it's, <laughs> I have a dad that leans over the table and go, you know, I never used to watch this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is some great stuff. And, and can you sign this for me, too? And so, I mean, it's that's, I think, the thing that really blows me away is just how yeah. multi generational a lot of this stuff is at this point i've right. i've met babies named gohan which i'm sure now are like <laughs> seven years old and having to go with that name but you know, <laughs> that's wild to put integral pieces i mean of course we all have integral pieces of anime that are interwoven into our lives because it's kind of been part of our life for so long but to see uh to see fans of that that that's I mean that's that's what's heartwarming, just the fact that there are such a thing called Galaxy Con where people want to get on the computer and and listen to these kind of stories and 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 whatnot. That's that's inspiring. It's it's the the whole thing is a is a pretty amazing medium to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Rock and roll. Well, thank you very much for those uh, very heartwarming stories, very wholesome stories. We definitely have time for at least uh, one more. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, oh, 
<laughs> Wait, a sudden request has has been thrown in by the chat. The chat would like to see the dog. So, uh, dog. Brittany, <laughs> let's, uh, let's let's bring on the star of uh, of, of tonight's Hi. stream. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let's, let's bring that up. Give the people what they want to see. Brando. <laughs> hey, Brando, how you doing? Thanks. <laughs> right there. So <laughs> sweet. He stinks. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. He smells. Oh, there we go. We have a oh, uh, we have yeah. we're having puppy birdie on stream. Let's bring that yes. up. There we go. Oh, chilling. Look at him. Oh, Comfy boy. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> quality quality pet interlude for y'all. <laughs> we, we give you what you want. <laughs> pet interlude. Yes. Oh man. So let's uh let's see what else the uh the, the fans want in terms of questions and answers this one is from aaron and the question is what type of car would each of your characters drive <laughs> let's try to know more about cars <laughs> oh, he's not gonna drive her own car like that's not oh man hmm what is a car that is like kind of a stupid buy what is a car that's really flashy but doesn't really do much for you? Because whatever that car is, I think that would be. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I have a feeling with Kirishima, it would be some kind of off-road vehicle, some kind of ATV <laughs> type of a situation. Yeah. I was just trying to think for Kirishima. What were the what truck mm. had the ads when we when I was the growing up that was always like like a rock? Um, do you remember <laughs> what oh, was Chevrolet, right? Uh, uh, I, I, I want to say that was Chevy. I, 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 I think maybe. Is it? <laughs> there you go. There you go. There I feel like, like you know, a rock. Uh, for that, I think it makes me think of like you know the old Broncos, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. The Broncos. Yeah. Crew, the <laughs> and the, yeah. <laughs> I like. That um. One. Ah, God, you know. <laughs> I feel I like think, it would have to be a hybrid. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna go. Oh definitely, yes, definitely a hybrid. <laughs> definitely a hybrid for no doubt. It's got to be a hybrid. It's also got to be like a, a, a sensible car, but also like the highest trim level of sensible, like all the Ooh. bells and whistles. But it's like it's still, Camry. yeah, like yeah, yeah, like <laughs> like a. Like a Honda Accord Sport, you know. I yeah. don't know something, mm. something like that. The uh, yeah, yeah, or uh, yeah. He's not going to go luxury, definitely not. Even if he could, I don't think something that wouldn't that's going to do the job. It's going to be really comfortable, but isn't going to garner too much attention. All right, bring us home, Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying so hard to think of like a funny answer, but all I keep coming to is that like, I feel like Bakugo would just be like, I don't care about that. That's stupid. And like, <laughs> and then, and then just wouldn't, wouldn't care. Like if he had a car or not, he'd be like, ah, oh, this car's beneath me. Like everything, <laughs> every, every car I think of, I'm like, nah, he probably wouldn't care about it. Like, whatever, I don't know. Whatever, whatever car I can hotwire. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. But, uh, I feel like he would need a convertible, if nothing else, only because he has such a penchant for like jumping out of things, like Ooh, when he's yeah. not supposed to, or jumping at things when he's not supposed to. So I just, I feel like that would be the thing: is he'd be driving, and Kirishima would be in the passenger seat, and Baka would be like, "What?" and like jump out. Kirishima would be like, "Oh my!" God. So <laughs> take the wheel. <laughs> I knew you had it. Like <laughs> so. Those are my thoughts. I got I, nothing more than that. <laughs> Rock and roll. I think we have time for one more quick one. So let's see if we have one more we can knock out before we start to wrap this one up. Okay. This one comes from Destiny. And the question is, what advice would you give to your character if you met them in person? I would suggest to Kirishima to accept himself. I think he still kind of struggles with that, uh, at least through to the end of season four. And I think that would he's getting better. But I think that would be uh, that would be what I would try. And the, and the funny thing is, is you could suggest that to him, much like with anything else. Uh, and he's not going to do it. Uh, and he's that out for himself. Right. 
Yeah. I would tell I, Kimi I, to study harder. Oh, sorry. No, go, 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 go. <laughs> I would tell her to study harder. I don't, I don't know and enough about her yet to know like her biggest flaw, but I know that she's not good in school and she should try harder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so. think, um, uh, this answer kind of harkens back to something else I said uh, about Todoroki, but I, I, I would, I would, I would say like, you know, take an hour a day and, and get out of your own head. Uh, you know, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, trust yourself a bit more. Um, I think you, you know, yeah, to trust yourself and, uh, that, and not, not to be so hard on yourself. I would say uh, uh, trying to decrease Midnight's value will not increase your. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Life lessons, man. Life lessons. That's a pretty good one. This is real stuff, man. Uh, facts. <laughs> I think I would say to Bakugo, you don't need to yell so much, dude. We're all right here. <laughs> I would also say that. Now, now, uh, is that just general life advice for, for his benefit or for your vocal cords? <laughs> it, I it, might, a bit of both. it might be it might be beneficial for everybody present, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he could rupture an eardrum for somebody if he tried hard enough. So <laughs> Before we wrap it up here, uh, do all of you have some final words for our wonderful live fans over here at GalaxyCon? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me here. It was really fun. Appreciate it. Guys, do yeah. you want to go? Do you want yeah. me to go? I'll go. I'll go. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 it's always just a heartfelt um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for caring about the show, for caring about the characters. Um, you know, uh, it, it's such, a, uh, I, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to be a part of telling this kind of a story and, and, um, you, you guys really make it all worth it. And I'm, I'm excited for season five and I hope you are too. <laughs> Yeah, I I echo a lot of those sentiments. Uh, you know, thanks a lot for watching the show and being excited for it, and always being excited for it. And you know, coming to coming to this the the virtual convention. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to actually see you guys in person, hopefully in the near future. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, as long as you guys in person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. As, as well as the other people on the panel. Indeed. Uh, but you know, it, the fact that we're still going, you know, and everybody, we still have these things to enjoy and get to enjoy the work and the shows together and everything is just—I think that's great. And uh, I want to thank you all for being there. So, so thank you. All right, uh, Justin, you want to uh, bring us home? You know, I—I could—I th I could speak for everybody. We miss. We miss you so much. We, we, you know, the weirdest thing right now is knowing questions are coming in, but uh, the best part of these panels are seeing your faces, seeing how excited mm. you get with some of these yeah. answers and, and how you respond to the characters. And uh, my goodness, we miss you so, so much. Uh, so uh, we can feel you. We can feel you. I feel it in here for sure. Uh, but I cannot wait until, uh, until uh, well, it's kind of like what we were – talking about joking about before you know i can't wait to the day where we might be able to shake your hand again yeah. <laughs> well thank you all again so much for being here for uh providing these wonderful answers to these wonderful questions and a big thanks to all of you who tuned in for our wonderful q a and until next time stay happy stay healthy and take care y'all